Number three, the things that could have been. Good night, how about that? Do you think ever of the things that could have been in your life if you had made the better decision, the good decision, the godly decision, the sacrificial decision? Oh, all of us look back and, oh, the things that could have been if only that's what we think. I had a businessman tell me one time, and I'll never forget this. He said, you know, when you make a decision, you never make bad decisions. Every decision we make we think is good. Uh, only after we make it do we realize we didn't have the wherewithal to be sure it would be good, and it turns out bad. All of us have made bad decisions. And there's where... Uh, Psalm 119, 9, Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. How can a young man keep his way clean? By taking heed according to thy word. Thy word have I hidden, so I will not sin against you. Man, I'm oh, man. Now, the biggest mistake I've made, if you want to know what it is, uh, the things that could have been, that aren't in my life. The man that led me to Christ told me one of the most critical things I could do is memorize the scripture. And so he started me, and man, I loved it. I dare say that the first 10 years I knew Jesus Christ, that uh, I had 400 scriptures I could have memorized. I let it drift away. Now let's review them again. Be sure you know the things that will never be those are our dreams that will not be fulfilled. Some of them shouldn't have been fulfilled. The things that should not have been. Now, that's our sins, and we look at that, and, oh, why did I do that? The things that could have been if we'd been obedient to the world, uh, to the Word of God. And then that last one, the things that yet can be. Now, Paul says that, talks about that over in Philippians 12. I don't care how long you've known Christ, what your sins are, what your maturity is. It doesn't make any difference to the Lord. The thing we need to do is to know that he's forgiven you for all you've done and all I've done. Isn't that wonderful? Have you confessed that to him? 1 John 1, 9 says, if we confess our sins... He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. I love that word cleanse. In the Greek, that's therapuo. We get our word therapeutic from it. He'll clean, clean us up. He'll forgive us. Listen, until you really believe that all your sins are forgiven, you'll never handle the sins in your life today. I can't believe it. How do we have a God like that who's lavished so much love on us, John said, and who forgives me? Lord, you knew all the stupid, sinful, selfish things I would do for the next 68 years and accepted me as your son forever. And now as I look back on it, he's forgiven me for everything. Man, I, I can hardly take that. But it's true. And once I know that and believe that, and that's what you and I ought to do, we can handle whatever sin is in our life right now. And say with Paul, you know, he said it well, and uh, the man told me it well many years ago. He said, H, and when I was so convicted about my sin, he said, you're not what you ought to be. I'll agree, but you're more than you used to be. And this is what yet can be. You can be more than you are right now. And that's what the Lord is interested in. Notice what Paul says. I haven't attained all that God has grasped me to do, nor have I been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that. He didn't yet of what Jesus Christ is to take hold of me to do. See, God has hold of you. God has hold of me. And he's not going to let go. <laughs> Boy, I, I can almost sing on that. I won't burden you with that. He's not going to let go of you and me. And Paul says then, forgetting what is behind 
and straining forward what is ahead, I press on to the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. Well, what is the prize? You know, the things that will never be, the things that should not have been, the things that could have been, and the things that yet can be, all four are going to be solved if you have the praise. The prize, I should say. Uh, but the prize does give us praise. The prize is having the mind of Christ. If you think with the mind of Christ, which you have, Paul told the Corinthians and Paul also told the Philippians, let the same mind that was alive in Jesus Christ be alive in you you'll have the prize. And you'll know how to handle those four things, and so will I. It'll take me a few more years to learn it. Could take some of you 30 or 40. The Christian life is not something we conquer in 30 years. The Christian life is something we come to understand after a lifetime. And then God completes it for us, as Paul promised the Philippians. Don't you know that the work that God has begun in you, he will complete, regardless of the things that went on. Father, thank you for your great grace to us, and help us take these four things, and put your mind against them. Thank you that the prize of life is thinking like our Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, and when we think like him, everything is solved. Uh, begins to be solved and allows us to be conquerors while we solve them. In your dear name, we thank you and praise you. Amen.